What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Vintage Cube Draft. This time we're going to do another stipulation draft. It is the Dan Brown No Fun for Anyone Stip Must Pick Stacks Cards. It's I don't guarantee this is going to be fun to play or to play against, but it's probably going to be fun to draft. Uh, smokestacks, Braids, Winter Orb, Tangle Wire, Land Destruction, The Abyss, etc. may take power over Stacks Cards. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, and that's our previous one where we just got manhandled. Still went 2-1. Grim Monolith? Oh, Time Walk. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Moat's a good stacks card, but actually Moat might come back. He said as he inched closer towards the mic. I'm going to take Time Walk here. That's a stacks card because it makes sure our opponent can't play any of their turns. Uh, except for all of the ones outside of the one we take extra. But other than that, none of them. Basalt Monolith. Lotus Petal. I think it's just Basalt Monolith here. Got some craisins. If you guys, hear, if you guys are hearing some ASMR crinkles, that's why. Yeah, we'll just take Basalt Monolith here. Actually, I think uh, Time Warp should be called Time Run. And then Time Stretch should be called Time Marathon. So then you have Walk, Run, Marathon. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool uh, progression. If a card can be mannequin, it's useless to take it. That's true. You can't actually... We can mannequin a time walk. As, as, I, I bet chat would suggest we mannequin the time walk. Also, that stream the other day where you guys were suggesting all the incorrect plays intentionally was hilarious. Actual hilarious. I was a fan. Um, stacks cards, huh? What are we going to hit here? Nothing. Nothing good. Uh, hmm. Glenelanger Archmage is pretty, pretty denial heavy. I think this is probably the best card for our deck. To subscribe to your channel, I lost my house. You didn't even, subs but someone else subscribed to your, so there's a gift sub. That doesn't even make any sense. Destiny Trigger knows what's up. I mean, if it's a no fun allowed step, Glenlinger Archmage does fill the non-stacks role. Best thing about craisins is they come in a bag, so when you shake them to show how big of a brick they are, the lid won't come off. Oh my god, that is a really, actually, that is a great feature. Also, I got the 50% less sugar ones, because... Craisins are already infinite sweet, and these are actually very, very good. I almost like them better than the regular ones, which is pretty good. I want to take the Bitter Blossom in in, a, in 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 hopes that we'll just open the braids, and braids will come be a thing. Wow, Spazio traded you their house for a gift sub? That's actually insane. That seems like really bad economics, but I don't, maybe it's different in Italy. Maybe it's maybe they use a different currency, a, a different. There's maybe there's a different economic system there. Also opposition too. So we have opposition and braids that both work, both work really well with bitter blossom. So that's cool. Mm, so that's cool. Okay. That's Mr. Garrison from South Park. I don't know if you guys knew that. You guys familiar with Mr. Garrison? Time Spiral? Hmm. Bells and Lock. Hmm. Hmm. None of these cards are very... St it might just be land stacks. That's not how that works at all.
We use pizza slices as coins. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. I don't think we're an Oath deck. Oath isn't very staxy. I'm probably just going to take Time Spiral because, sure, why not? Where are all my stacks cards at? I guess Leyline's a card we can play. That's not very staxy, though. Gonti, it steals one of their things. This now it's just blue black control. Dragon Lord Jamoka is kind of, I mean it's it's barely staxy. Like it's almost I'm just gonna take the Taking stuff does mean we acquire their fun. I actually think that's a reasonable way to look at that. Alright, this pack has not been great. Ugin is... Ugin's... Ugin's not a fun card, I guess. We can take an Ugin. I don't think it's Tasker or Liliana or Torrential Gear Hulk here. Spellskite? Sure. Spellskite's fine. Moat came back. I kind of like Moat. Moat is staxy as hell. Lyra, you can go on the sideboard. I mean, I'll probably play a Lyra. If we're that heavy white, but... Oh, Shambling Vent. That is a land we can take and play it for our moat or our black cards. Alright, we didn't actually see any... So we didn't actually see any stacks cards that we really passed, so... Ideally... They will be in the next pack. Goblin Welder. You can trade a moat for a Goblin Welder. I don't think Master of the Hunt is stacks-ish. I'm not sure I would equate... Uh, just making... <laughs> making tokens with stacks, but... Demon Lord Bells Unlock with our moat? Sure. I actually like Demon Lord Bells Unlock a lot. Well, the angel's definitely going to be... We'll definitely play the angel if we get enough If we get enough white sources. The problem is that moat is a stacks card and angel's not. So I don't want to just be like, hey, I'll just play angel with... I don't want to just be a moat deck. A blue, black, an esper control deck with a lyra and a moat. I want to make sure we have enough slots in our deck to adequately uh, fill the stacks slots. Like you do. Mox Ruby, that's a stacks card if I ever saw one. We can play the Mox we can play the Goblin Welder off the Mox Ruby and then uh, sacrifice it. Yeah, that's pretty much the only stacks card in this pack. Ideally, that Demir Signet comes back, but that's never happening. So let's be real. Soulfire Grandmaster in Time Walk is probably one of the most stacksy things you can do. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, we're definitely taking the Soulfire Grandmaster and going off. Where are, the, where are all the artifacts at, man? Come on. Yeah, so I think our black could also be mixed with our red. Because we do have... Um, if we end up getting something like a Johnny, which is pretty good. I don't think Duretti is very impressive here. I think it's just Colonnade here. I mean, if we're playing Moat, like I don't want to, I don't want to be bringing in Warm Coils. I'd rather just have the Blue White Land because we're definitely playing Blue and we're definitely playing White here. Crucible of Worlds could be Staxi if we get the Strip Mine. I'm gonna take the Crucible of Worlds. <laughs> what is in stacks? That is a good question. Also, Abyss is very good with Bitter Blossom, too.
Steam fence could be good. I don't really like getting rid of the black just yet. We also don't have any any red cards. Nevin rolls a disc. It does get rid of a moat though, which is unfortunate. Repeal. My dad is not stacked. So that's a good point. That's fair. Chandra Pyroma. It is. I mean, I think I don't know if disc is very stacked. <laughs> the Children's Soldiers from Arthur stacks? Uh, oh, Tundra seems great here. Yeah, we'll just take the Tundra. None of these are stacks either. God, where are all the stacks cards? Where my stacks cards be at? Nothing. Literally nothing. This is rough. I might just actually abandon this and go, like, Esper Control. And uh, we have another pack, though. So, I mean, I don't want to give up on it just yet. Deccan Stone seems fine. Needle Spires is also an option if we're not black, but uh, we have no reason not to be black. Literally, yeah, literally no stacks cards. We're taking things like Spell Skite and Bitter Blossom with the with the hope that we can. I mean, Moat. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a reason to be red here. Moonlight, what's going on? Um, we can also take Urborg. Urborg just seems good. We'll take the Deccan Stone. Path to Exile. Yeah, let's take that. That's pretty solid removals. Sun Titan, what do you get back? Anything? Actually, Sun Titan getting Soulfire Grandmaster gives us a better shot at um, the combo, but so does Unburial Rites, unlike Demon Lord Bells and Lock or Gonti. I like I like Unburial Rites better, actually. What do you need for affiliate status? Congrats on that, by the way. Um, I think it's just Sphinx's Rev here. I don't think I don't I don't know about Sun Titan being the best stacks card. Oh, Oblivion Ring came back. That's really good. All right, all right. So Dan Brown, unfortunately, we are abandoning this stipulation. Uh, I think we're just gonna go. Actually, I'll wait till the, I'll, I'll wait till the draft is over. But it looks like we might abandon the stip. Baneslayer is also awesome because we have Lyra and we have Moat. So that's pretty cool. I like Painful Truths as well. Do we have how much card drawing do we have? I actually almost like Painful Truths better. Three cards is really good. Yeah, we'll take Painful Truths here. Um, Nevermore's disc. This is just a strain enchantment, which is totally fine. Plus we have a Mox Ruby to Wow, Archangel of Thune. Alright, that's pretty good. We might abandon this draft. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. We have a good time. Oh, the old Lotus Ruby Time Walk deck. A classic. Yeah, sometimes the port don't work out. Too much randomness. And I'd rather just redo the stipulation than have it be like, hey, sorry, you you know, we just didn't get the deck together. Too bad. Try again next time. And a scrubland and a bribery. Wow. Scrubland might table. I don't think we need Council's Judgment because we have a Oblivion Ring, Deck, Path. Moat takes care of a lot of threats. Ugin. I don't foresee us playing Time Spiral. I'm pretty sure it's Bribery here. Taking a break from a comedy doing Commander online. Online? That'd be sweet. 
I think it is always bribery. Like, bribery is just too good. Also, turn two bribery with Lotus is pretty insane. Turn one bribery with Mox Ruby Lotus Land is also pretty good. We'll just take the bribery. Like, even now, we're still not getting any stacks cards, so. Are we an opposition deck with Bitter Blossom? Our deck is not good without Bitter Blossom. Without uh, Bitter Blossom, we have seven creatures, but with Bitter Blossom, it's great. I'm going to move the Crucible to the sideboard. We don't really have a reason to play that. I'm going to move the Archangel of Thune as well. I don't think we're bitter. I don't think we're oppositioning here. Actually, Packrat does seem very good. Um, we have a lot of things that are easy discards, uh, specifically because we have Unbarrel Rights, and it's also a Packrat. I don't know if you guys know about Packrat. I wonder if this is a Mox Diamond deck or a Thran Dynamo deck. Considering we have a Mox, it might be a Thran Dynamo deck because that does let us cast Ugin and Sphinx's Revelation pretty early. I don't think it's an Amiria Angel deck. I don't think it's a Gideon Jura deck. I think we can just take Thran Dynamo and feel pretty good about that. If we took Opposition, I would 100% take Amiria Angel. Could just be Bone Shredder too, but I don't think we actually need more creature removal. I actually rather just have Theron Dynamo to cast our big things later, or our, our later things earlier. <sighs> Nahiri, Nahiri is actually pretty good. We have a Mox Ruby, but that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna take Everflowing Chalice here. Lodestone Golem, but I think at this point we've pretty much passed the we've passed the point of stipulation. Um, I like Day of Judgment, but we already have a Moat. Star of Temptation seems good. It's a control magic. We don't have a control magic yet. Gideon of the Trials. That's a three-mana Gideon. Anguished Unmaking also gets rid of anything, and it exiles it, which is super nice. It's probably better than the stupid Gideon, right? We could have had the Gotham deck. That is fair. Compulsive Research is probably the pick, though, right? Hmm. I was going to say this is 24 cards. We actually don't actually count those. Yeah, I'm going to take Anguish to make them. We already have Painful Trues. We have a bunch of card draw. We're getting a lot of... <laughs> we could have Ravages of War and Armageddon, which are stacksy, but I don't think... Like, Ravages of War and Armageddon, a stacks deck do not make, so... This is 23 cards. And Bitter Blossom and Mode is a pretty sweet main deck combo. I'm going to take the Solemn Simulacrum because why not? I don't know if he's going to make the cut. But I do like all the other cards we have. Dan Brown, apologies. Uh, if you guys, if you're watching this, uh, it did not work out. So we're just going to do it again. And uh, we'll try the Dan Brown stipulation next time. So we're just gonna we're just gonna lean towards Esper Control here because this deck looks pretty sweet so far. Also, Time Walk and Soulfire Grandmaster is baller. We can also get Baleful Strix here. That's great. I don't care about cast down in this cube. Ulamog is kind of out of out of our reach. Yeah, we'll just play Baleful Strix and we'll cut probably cut like Spell Skite from the main deck. Spell Skite's actually pretty good with the Soulfire Grandmaster. Keep Soulfire Grandmaster alive. We also have Basalt Monolith. I didn't even realize that. We're going to take out Everflowing Chalice. Maybe. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Scrubland came back. That's all I ever wanted. That's fantastic. All of our lands produce white, which is great. Opposition came back. I bet this Amiria Angel comes back. Watch. You ready? Oh, Mystic Confluence is gas. 
I would love a Mr. Confluence. Let's make one cut. I can probably see Declaration and Stone making it out of the deck. I like Everfly. I like going turn two Chalice into turn three Thrandino. I want to take the Plateau in case we want to play a red card. It's it's probably fine to just replace a basic uh, planes in case you want to play Wear Tear. So. Or a Joyra, for example. This deck seems pretty Joyra y. Look, Lodestone Golem came back. We got a Stax deck. And Pernicious Dude. Alright, um, yeah, I think this is just a deck. And we have several good fixin', fixin' lands. Yeah, we're just gonna be moting again. Mode is such a blowout in the games that we had it. I kinda wanna add this Archangel of Thune, but not really. It's, it's very good with Bitter Blossom, right? You not only gain the life from the Archangel of Thune, but it also puts counters on all of them. That's actually tempted to find a place for. Tempted to find a pl I'm tempted to find a place for it. And that's very tempting to find a place for it. Those are the two different... We can take the Spell Skite out for now and put Archangel in, maybe. Alright. So, four blue, which is only six blue. Let's actually sort by color. Okay, so we're more black and white. So, three, four, five... Six, seven. <laughs> seven black sources. Okay, that seems fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight white sources. We can go down to seven white sources. Four, five, six. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think we're already up one. Four, five, six, three. Yeah, I guess this is probably fine. There's a lot of mana requirements in our deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six blue. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven white. Four, five, six. Six black. Six, six, seven. With a ruby and a black lotus. A lot of double costs. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna YOLO with it. Maybe cut Thrain Dynamo for Solemn Simulacrum. Is opposition better than Embargo Rights? I don't think so. I mean we only have nine creatures in our deck. I don't I don't think it's great. And like Packrat's gonna win us the game. I don't really want to tap their guys down. And we also have Moat, so I'm not super Meanwhile, Unbarrel Rights gets us a lot of very, very valuable targets. Like, it gets us Counterspell, it gets us Control Magic. Um, if we if Soulfire Grandmaster dies and we have Time Walk in hand, it gets us Soulfire Grandmaster and Time Walk. So. Yeah, I think this is alright. Yeah, I think Bitter Blossom... Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be tapping down Pack Rat tokens. If I have Pack Rat token, I'd rather just be killing them with it. I mean, I, I, Bitter Blossom is the the one card that really makes Opposition shine in this deck, but if you don't have Bitter Blossom, you're just, like, playing one creature a turn, and then, like, we have one two-drop other than Pack Rat. Uh, two two-drops. No three-drops. Uh, three four-drops. And two five-drops. Like, we don't... If you don't hit Bitter Blossom or Pack Rat, like, you're probably not oppositioning plus you get okay so we play pack rat on turn two we make it a rat on turn three and then we play opposition on turn four and then we only have two creatures out so i mean i don't know i i i think it's i i agree with you that it's great with with bitter blossom but i think i don't think the thing you want to be doing with your three mana four four pack rat tokens is tapping down a land
where Unburial Rites gets this like literal combo piece. Like you want to time walk, you want to time walk and, and Soulfire Grandmaster here very, very much. Because that's an infinite combo. I will play first. Can we do anything here? Keep. I mean, I guess we just go turn two Chalice Lotus. Or turn two, like, Lyra. Oh, yes, please. Actually, if we just go turn two Lyra, can you actually deal with that? Turn one Chalice on two is actually not terrible. I mean, it's literally like, it, it just turns your Lotus into a Soul Ring. It turns your Everflowing Chalice and Lotus into a Soul Ring. Yeah, we're just going to do this. I like waiting till next turn so we can Bells Unlock, but I think this is actually stronger against the red deck. And if they play turn one Fire Drinker Seder, I have to assume they're the red deck, so. Okay. <laughs> Game over, boys. Hello. Spellskite comes in. We're having a good time. I'm going to take the Bitter Blossom out against the red deck. Hey, we had a good time. Moat also seems pretty good. I think we can submit like this. Wow, that was pretty bonkers. Hmm? I like this hand. Lotus one time. Okay. Oof, Searing Spirit to the face. Wow, there's a lot of lands. Um, I'm just going to go Gonti here. Because next turn we can keep up Archmage mana. Yeah, I'll take your one creature, I guess. That we can't actually pump up due to uh, white mana. Spellskite's good started name was Spazio Skite. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, we had to play the uh, the plane so that we can get Moat down next turn. But I think we can actually still play Glenlinger Archmage here and cast Figure of Destiny. And next turn we can moat and cube up a counter spell. Did you really open three power? Yes, I did. Technically opened four power, but we had to pass the Mox Emerald for the Black Lotus. That's a good one. Especially because it has a float. It was unfortunate. We could go Thran Dynamo into Moat. This guy's problematic, though. I guess we could just block here. Do we play Moat this turn? Two, three, four. Yeah, we can play Moat this turn. And we have a lot of answers to a Thunderstorm Hellkite. Thundermaw Hellkite, whatever.
I mean, they could discard two cards to Hazaret, and then we take nine and go to three. So I'm pretty sure we're blocking 100%. I don't see a situation where we don't block here. <laughs> Cast something in response? Sure. You got it. Well, Ugin keeps us alive next turn. Sphinx's Revelation is fantastic. Painful Truths might be too deadly if we actually have to block here, which we probably will. Because then if we have if we draw in Burial Rites, it's in Burial Rites. I don't want to go to three here. That's pretty scary against the red deck. All right, two cards in hand. I don't believe they can kill us here, so that's good. Well, that's four. And four more. Sounds good. Next card would have been... Unbear Arts. Okay. Well, anything else gain life in the sideboard? What do we do? How do we deal with the stupid dragon? Deck and stone. Gets rid of it. Get rid of Pack Rat here. I mean, Bitter Blossom is a thing. Yeah, we also have Obli we have Anguish on making Oblivion Ring. Um, we had Path, Sower of Temptation. We had actually a ton of answers to that, but we just didn't draw any of them. That's not going to do it. Also not great, but... Ugh. How do we go from winning that first game to just losing in so, so ridiculous? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to waste a... Thubdermaw. That's a good one. Lotus Hands versus no Lotus Hands. That's correct. Also no Mox Hands either. Time Walk. That's a thing. Don't want to get rid of this guy? Maybe? Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this guy. I don't want to take a million damage off of him. And also, uh, next turn we can go Time Walk into Thran Dynamo. Into Bells Unlock if we draw another Black Source. This isn't the best time walk, but I think it's actually fine right now because it lets us really do 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 things that we care about. Also, if we draw like Basalt Monolith or something, it's pretty good. Baleful Strix. Yeah, this lets us next turn go Archmage and Baleful Strix. Unless they have a way to destroy it. Nope, just a Searing Spear. That is fine. They did not. They also didn't do anything exciting. One, two. Let's see what we hit with this. That's a good draw. Let's get down to business. Turn to paint the hands. Incinerate, 12, okay. You got it. Thunder my Hellkite. Shrine. Well, that's burnt. That's 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 ringable. That's four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Oh, we can't cast Bells Unlock, and we can't do the thing. Dang.
Yeah, we're just going to attack here because if they have uh, Thunder My Hulk, it's going to tap down our guys anyway. If they have something like Stormbreath Dragon, we're going to feel real dumb, but... I mean, we're at a point where we can counter Fire Blasts, and they have three cards in hand, so... Hazard's pretty good, but they can't discard a card, so they can just shoot us and play a guy. Yep, that's pretty good. Yeah... Okay, that's actually pretty solid. I'm going to play that because it's the only thing we can do. It's all I can do. Keep a waiting for you. Alright, so we can Ugin next turn, which is nice. And we're not going to actually play anything here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. So we go to 9. We're going to have to exile everything that we own. Uh, I don't actually want to get rid of Glenelg... Oh, they're just not attacking. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, they can't. They can't attack. Well, I guess they could have just discarded cards, right? Hmm. Yeah, it does give them Shrine back, but I mean... At this point, it's probably better to get the hazard off the board. We can also get the Fire Drinker Seder off the board and just ignore the hazard for now. It's a tricky turn. We have to take down the shields now because I, I wanted to play Shambling Vent so that we can start gaining life. But I think we're actually fine like this. We take four if they discard both cards, and I want to keep up mana for. I think this is probably misplay. I think we should actually probably play to land. They have two cards in hand. If they discard both, we go to seven. And that's not that scary with both these guys on the board. Yeah, we're just going to play this. Even if they Fire Blast us. Even if their last two cards are Fire Blast. Like a thing, we only take eight and we still have two guys left. So, I'll deal with it. Lenin Draw Change also has Persist, so if you want to kill that. Oh god, is it Fire Blast Dual Caster Mage? That's. Oh no, they're just discarding two mountains. That seems great. Okay. Alright, they have one card in hand. I, I'm pretty sure there's nothing they can have here that kills us. And I will 1000% block. With a Baleful Strix. No Trample, thank goodness? Sure. pretty good um huh uh there's no stip currently so for those of you looking we did not actually follow through with the stip because we couldn't I'm pretty sure this is going to be game right like we have two ways to deal with this If we just gain life here, it's just very, very good for us, right? One, two, three. Figure you're just going to discard. Sure, Falconrath Gorger. Go to five. And this puts us out of Thunder My Hellkite range. Okay, I was like, oh, 
All right. No Thunder Maw Hellkite into Burn Spell, I guess, is what we're looking for here. Deal. That is one of your two cards. I accept that. I will also be ultimating Ugin immediately. Okay. Put up to seven cards from your hand onto the battlefield. All right. Um, Gaunty. Uh, Colonnade. Three. Basalt Monolith. Bells and Lock. Two remaining, two remaining. Um, we get a land for the turn, so we'll say land. Eh, we'll just say double land. I don't think we want Sower on the board yet. Mox Ruby, take one, sure. All right, exile a card. So one, two, yeah, I'll just take the Firecraft. So can we kill them? Probably not. Do I want to play anything that uh, prevents us from attacking? Probably not. Actually, if they don't block here, they're dead, which is pretty, pretty insane. And, oh, wait, hold on. They were at nine. Oh, they're not dead yet. They're one away. That's sad. So close, yet so far. They have one card in hand, and then we take five from Painful Truths. That's pretty brutal. I don't think we're doing that. I don't think we just, I just don't think we have any reason to do that. Converted mana cost. So if we play this for four, we're in good shape. What? Oh, because it doesn't cost them. Whatever. I don't care. That's stupid. But not my concern, I guess. <laughs> and that'll do. All right, cool. Uh, I didn't want to put Moat in play because then we can't attack with Shambling Vent or um, the Gaunti when it's in play, so... Let's keep going. Oof. No bueno. Uh, a little more bueno. Not great, but... We will reluctantly keep a basic land on top. Yeah, this hand's rough. So was our mulliganed hand. If we draw Painful Truths, it's actually pretty good. We can go turn two Chalice, turn three Painful Truths. Turn four Lyra, ideally. Me too. Ooh, big bribs. Having the cast with the cast option and the cast with multi kicker option is very weird. Do you ever want to just cast it without multi kicker? Probably. You want to up your storm count, I guess. What do I know? Three five drops. One is double white, which we don't have. One is double blue, which we don't have. One is only single black, which we do have, but it's also the one we can't actually cast. So. Ideally, we just draw Black Lotus and then go Bribery. That's what we're looking for. Oh, that's a good card. Well, they didn't hit Lotus. They did hit the two colors that we needed for our cards in our hand. Missing a land drop? They missed a land drop. 
Lotus. Planes. Wish we could have some kind of play before turn four, but I guess not. Sphinx's Rev, Dynamo, Celestial. All right, still no, still no Lotus. Still live for Lotus. Also, if we just draw another island, I'm completely fine with that, or I'll take a uh, Tundra as well. They also haven't seen any black cards, which is kind of funny, but... Tide Hollow Sculler? I'll cry if it's a Tide Hollow Sculler. Just a chalice for... Oh, they, they... We literally just had the conversation about who kill, who clicks the cast button without kicking the multicast button. Oh my god, the universe is a simulation, dude. It's a thing. Wow, we literally just had a whole conversation about that. That's crazy. I can't even remember the last time someone's ever done that against me. I'm pretty sure I just want to time walk here. Like, it, it ups our chances of being able to bribery or hit Lotus. Which are one and the same, I guess. Actually, Bells and Locks probably scarier than... Than Lyra here. Okay. A couple of angels and an anguish done making. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we can actually anguish done making the, the Ashiok if we want to. Bribery is difficult when you only have one blue mana. What do they get? Sower and Packrat? Come on. And a Bitter Blossom. If we hit Lotus, it's going to be sick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can go Anguished into Bribery. And if they kill this guy, we can Unburrow Rights it. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Intriguing. Most Intriguing. I mean, I have 16 cards left on my deck. I kind of just want to anguish one, two, three, four, and then we can't do anything else, though. <sighs> and then we take three and five. It's pretty bad. Can we take another hit for three? Probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are seven lands in our deck. Well, it's six lands and a lotus left. Two, three, four, five, six, Lyra. And we're just going to actually attack Ashiok here. I think this is fine. We can take a hit for three. We just don't want them to have Sower of Temptation or Packrat. Well, they're going to have Packrat available, but I don't think we care about that as much. They can put a Packrat into play for free. They can make two Packrats if they want, but... I think once we have Lyra, Archangel of Thune, Demon Lord, Bells and Lock on board, it's pretty good for us. Ugin, Scrubland, and Lotus. So there are now five lands in our deck. Mind Slaver. See, that's a better anguish than making target. Um, we can also just bribery them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have kind of eight mana, kind of not. We can do one thing this turn if the, the, the stupid lodestone golem in play. 
I don't think we're playing Archangel of Thune. I don't think I care about that. It's either Bribery or Anguished on Making. I think we have to Anguished on Making the Mind Slaver, unfortunately. So one, two, three, four. And then we go to 20. Yeah, that feels strong. All right. They have two cards in hand? I think we're doing well here. Let's actually go to combat first, um, because if they have like Cryptic Command to tap down our team, I really don't want to give them the value of countering and tapping down our team. I'd rather just deal the, the 11 damage here. Turns out Dominaria is the strongest set ever printed. Oh, good times, good times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nox, ooh, let's see what you have here. Oh, there is a Mystic Confluence in your deck. All right, I'm gonna actually screenshot this for the value. What if, there, what if the last cards in hand are, is a Treachery too? That's pretty good. If they draw Tinker, there's no Lightning Greaves, right? So we don't have to worry about quick shenanigans. They could have Greaves in hand, but that seems bad that you wouldn't have just played Greaves. So I don't think you have Greaves. Tinker, Treachery, and Upheaval. All three cards are very scary, and they're all from... Two of two, or, two of them are from Urza's block. Um, so any, any artifact stuff we have is coming in. Could have Damnation in hand. Yeah, just gonna get blight steel. Whatever. Treachery isn't out for you. No, it's not really an out. We just kill you with Lyra Dawnbringer. And Orth Bells and Lock. Four, five, six, seven. If they draw upheaval, it's very good. Of course you did. <sighs> of course you did. That was your... Okay. That actually seems fine. So Chrome Mox is gone. So we know you have... Signet. Island, Island, Island. Swamp. And you discarded a bunch of those. So we know Blightsteel. Unless you discarded it. Probably not. Blightsteel. What else did you even have? Basalt Monolith. Let's go this guy. Uh, this guy. Chalice for multi-kicker. Okay. And we can actually discard on Burial Rites and Bells and Lock. And then two lands, I guess. Uh, we want one, two, three, four, five. We actually want all the doubles. I guess we don't need double blue anymore, so we can get rid of one blue and get rid of Basalt Monolith. So now we can either go white mana to Unburial Rites, Bells and Lock, or we can go... I mean, it's basically turn two for them. They have Chalice, too. So I... Oh, I'm just going to scoop here. Okay. That's pretty good. I accept. All right. So, Deck and Stone definitely comes in because it deals with your idiots. Um, that can come in. We can bring Plateau in for a Plains. Packrot seems bad with Upheaval. Moat doesn't seem like it affects them at all. Actually, Moat seems great against the Blightstone Colossus, so never mind. And we'll just submit with 41. I think that's fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep this hand. It doesn't do much, but it has all of our colors. And it's got a time walk. 
And Mox. That's aggressive. Sure. So this is funny. If they actually go Tinker next turn, we can go Mox, Island, Time Walk, so are your guy. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Oh, we're going to do it. Are you guys ready? Unless we draw Lotus, in which case it's just going to be bonkers. Okay. Your turn! Oh, yep. That's pretty good. <laughs> Can I have this? Oh, good games. Woo, boy. Way magic's a heck of a card game. Are we 2-0 right now? Man, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. Everybody wins. The old time warp into time walk into a uh, sower of temptation. The old still had all these with the moat. This hand is not keepable. Uh, this hand is significantly better. Turn two chalice into turn three painful truths if we hit another land. They also went to five, so that's not nothing. I'm gonna bottom you. Turn three blight steel is good, which is why I was gonna kill them with it. <laughs> also, tundra is like the perfect land. It gives us double blue. And it gives us the white we needed. Oh, our fellows. Well. Ideally, we can go Painful Truths into Bribery next turn. And hopefully they're uh, not going to do anything degenerate in the meantime. They have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. Primeval Titan, every every time. Never fails. Mull to five, get Primeval Titan. 100% of the time. You get it 5% of the time, you get 100% of the time. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm just a little, little tilted by the Primeval Titan because that's pretty obnoxious. That's... I could really want a Painful Truths here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We go to seven. But if you have like an Ulamog in your deck, you have one card. You can also just play this, drawing two less. The problem is if we don't hit a land in the next two cards, I'm going to risk it. I think it's better. That's worse. All right, if there's not a land here, we're just we've actually just committed suicide, unfortunately. But I will block Primeval Titan, 100%. Zanagos. Yeah, Truths could hit Lotus Land. You're not wrong. I will take two if that's the only dude you're attacking with. That's pretty awesome, actually. Land. Oh! One time, Ulamog. Or Emrakul. Or any of those any of those big idiots. Hangerback Walker. Crater Hoof. I don't think we care about that. I do like a Terastodon, though. Terastodon seems pretty unbeatable. They have a Black Lotus in here. Sylvan Library, Tooth and Nail, Skull Clamp. 
All right, I guess we're screen capping again. They have zero cards in hand, which is nice. All right. So that means we can, we can get rid of Sheldock Isle. We can get rid of uh, our own Everflowing Chalice. Yeah, Strix saves a trader, trades with Seder, but I'm, I can just take two. I'm not really terribly concerned. Yeah, if we kill Zen again, it's going to go Sheldock Nykthos. Um, I'm not thrilled with the idea of giving them seven creatures on board and <laughs> having one 9-9. Nine -nine. That doesn't seem great. Um... I'd almost rather just take the Crater Hoof so that they don't have access to it. But I think it is Terastodon. And I think we get rid of Everflowing, Sheldock, and Xenagos. I'd rather give them two and us one than give them three because that's pretty ridiculous. Because now they have six guys to our three and we're at 17. So that's pretty good. Strix has evasion to get in there. Yeah, that's true. One damage a turn. Like you do. There comes Crater Hoof. They just topped at Crater Hoof. Tooth and Nail? Wow. No, it's got to be Hangerback Walker, actually. Yeah, this is just Hangerback Walker. Oh, Genesis Wave Freight. I see. And a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Absolutely incredible. <sighs> Green decks. Deck and Stone can come in. I felt like we did really good there until we didn't. Sweeney Boy, how far behind are you? I feel like you're pretty far behind. Daddy Cube, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Um, yeah. Yep, you just have to not hit Crater Hoof, and there he is. So, good times. But it was not good times. It was bad times. Yesterday morning, I was at 320 subs. Today, we're at 308. So, Twitch Prime subs are super cool. <laughs> Super cool. Oh, man. No, I mean, like, it's it's support nonetheless. Like, I can't even complain about it. I appreciate it. It's just the 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 swings are real hard. I feel like I've been at 300 or so subs for a long time without making any, any real progress past 300-ish. So... Do we just win? Can we just win with a pack rat? I'll keep this. Let's do it. It's round three. We're having a good time. To make you feel better, I suggest you adopt saying "famale." <laughs> okay, that's. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, no subway sandwiches for you is right, buddy. All right, so. Also, if we draw a land next turn, we can just... Or if we draw a Lotus next turn, we can just go Bribery, which is pretty insane. Static Suicide, what's going on, buddy? Uh, thank you so much for your Patreon support as well. I saw that this morning, and you are awesome, Mitch. You are one cool Mitch. Yeah, we're just pack ratting. We're just going to rat him to death. I'm going to assume, cross my fingers, that the green deck can't deal with a pack rat. Okay. That's a thing, I guess. Pass. So they draw a Demir Signet. Sure. I remember when Frank was born. I was the doctor. Okay. And wave. Okay. Okay. You are the rat beneath my wings. I'm going to get rid of Bells and Lock here. I don't foresee us casting Bells and Lock. And also, if we draw something like Unbearer Rights, 
That's a good card to have in the trash can. However, I'm going to keep the blue in case we draw like Mox here and we want to... Nailed it. Never didn't have it. Predict the future and it will become your... Your future. Do 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 do. Prime time. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to be. All right, so we can actually probably uh, ascertain what's in their hand from these two from these two images. Beep 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 beep. Let me actually make a new thing, and we'll see if we can figure out what's in their hand. This is this is my right to do. Bird courser. Oh, they are in alphabetical order. Remember when we were talking about searching your library has an alphabetical order? They misclick on the Emrakul, and then they were like, oh, I misclicked. Yeah, sure you did, buddy. Uh, Finhorn Elves, those are in play, right? Okay. So, Hangerback, then Hangerback. Tree Speaker. Kitchen Finks. Llanowar Elves. But you haven't played those. Oh, they're, this is your current deck. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Crater Hoof's still in the deck. Tooth and Nail is still in the deck. Sylvan Library is still in the deck. Harmonize and Genesis Way were both in the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. Lotus and Channel? Oh, gross. I guess they just have nothing to cast at those things. All right, so Lotus, Channel, and... And didn't they draw Demir Signet? Why didn't they play Demir Signet? That's weird. I don't think it's an elf. Either way, I'm taking Primeval Titan because that lets us play a lot of things. All right, Island on top, cool. Get out of the dang way. We need another white source. So Tundra. And actually, we'll probably get Shambling Vent and Colonnade. And why are you so big? I don't know. All right. Pass. Uh, you can definitely write down... It's considered notes, so you can definitely write down. Pilgrim on top. So all the cards that we were really scared about were still in the deck. Tooth and Nail was still in the deck. Harmonize was still in the deck, I believe. Genesis Wave was still in the deck, so... We know they have Signet, Lotus, and Channel in hand. Here comes a Signet, I would imagine. I don't know why you didn't play that last turn. But, you know, what do I know? Yeah, we're just going to Alpha here. I think this game is over. Bribery is a hell of a card, man. Um, let's get Tundra and Swamp. And I will 100% discard two cards to make rats if you want to block. No blocks? Well, I'm definitely discarding one card at least. One, two, three. Six, and nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're going to Gaunty. Um, actually, we're not going to Gaunty. Because if we Gaunty, there, there's a there's a chance they hit something utterly broken with Channel in hand. And right now they're just drawing Pilgrim. So one of the ways we lose this game is actually if we... Is if we give them the option to draw more cards than they need. Or than, than they should. Sweet. And that's how you win it. All right. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to just bring an opposition because, boy, are they doing some some broken stuff. Actually, Moat's pretty good against them. Terastodon's like one of the few outs for that we saw, I believe. Yeah, I don't think opposition's going to really do it. I mean, I guess I could tap down stuff during upkeep or whatever, but...
Rickety wrecked. We are actually we're two zero and we're in game. Th we're going to game three. I think this. I think our deck's fine. Oh god, <laughs> I don't know if this is good. I'm pretty sure it's actually bad. This is exactly why I didn't mulligan. Like, at least we can play literally anything we draw with the other hand. Sure. Ugh, so stupid. Eh, that's probably one of the best lands we could have hit there. Sure. Give me a way to kill that guy. Not yet, I guess. And before land, Primeval Titan on turn three after a mull. Yep, here we go. Wow. Thank you. Genesis Wave for, for six on turn three. <laughs> Tooth and nail. Oh boy. I guess we could have actually time walked, hope to hit a land, and then oblivion ring this guy. That is an option. I don't think it's a good option. Undrum Tuna, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Just kill my three permanents, have a 9-9. Nine, nine. Wow, you killed wow, that's interesting. I would have probably taken off taken me off all lands. Although, I mean, we're not recovering from this. This is just stupid. Yeah, cool. All right. I hate losing on, on notes like that because that's like just the worst. Like, I, now I feel terrible. I don't want to end the video in any kind of pleasant manner because it just wasn't fun. All right. So we didn't actually get to play game three, unfortunately. Magic the Gathering might as well have crashed and uh, we didn't get to play a match. So that's cool. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys are interested in uh, supplying your own stipulation or supporting the channel in any way or uh, supporting me on Patreon, you can check out the links below. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. I will see you guys next time. And thank you for watching. Really appreciate it.